It's a Zane Gray novel come to life. Bands of wild mustangs traversing Nevada's purple sage, in the flesh links to our Western heritage and the literal vehicles for America's manifest destiny. It's hard to avoid cliche sentimentality when you see them, not on a television screen, but in person, living free on the land, hooved anachronisms to some, symbols of the American spirit to others, and to a few, vermin of the range, cockroaches with manes, invasive non-natives who are a pestilence on the land. The wild horse is America's greatest partner. We are a cowboy nation. We rode in on the horse. Author Deanne Stillman's book, Mustang, chronicled the irreplaceable role of horses in the settlement of America, a history that unfolds like a series of Frederick Remington moments. Horses carried the earliest explorers, miners, and mountain men, the soldiers who tamed the frontier, the Indians who resisted. The wild horse blazed our trails, uh, fought our wars, has been on the front lines with us since day one. It's so much a part of our heritage and who we are as Americans. Thomas Huxley wrote, horses and people evolved as if destined to be together. It's always been a near perfect fit. But when machines started producing horsepower, the Mustangs became an inconvenience. The argument is now made that wild horses are interlopers, the offspring of outlaws and runaways with no place in the natural order. That argument is false. The Nevada State Museum at Lorenzi Park is home to a stark and irrefutable rebuttal. The restored remains of an Ice Age horse native to America 15,000 years ago, an animal that coexisted with mammoths, sloths, even camels. An historically accurate artist's vision shows horse herds in the then lush Las Vegas Valley, stalked by long extinct big cats. Horses were not introduced to North America by Europeans, it's the other way around. They certainly are native to Nevada. Scientists like Amy Danzi have proven beyond any doubt that horses evolved in North America over a period of more than 20 million years. From here, they spread to the rest of the world. They're native to the New World, and when they became fairly well advanced, then they went to the Old World became the modern horses. Danzi reconstructed the remains of a 25,000-year-old horse found at Pyramid Lake, 13,000 years before humans arrived. After surviving and adapting for millions of years, they vanished from North America not long after Ice Age hunters got here. Those who want them hunted down once again prefer to cloud the issue of their origin. The disconnect exists for a couple of reasons. First of all, greed. If you demonize wildlife, it's easy to remove it. As many as two million wild horses roamed North America at the beginning of the 20th century. In just over 100 years, they've been reduced to a pittance, perhaps 30,000 still in the wild, though estimates vary. For a period, freelance cowboys captured and domesticated the choicest mustangs, but the harvest soon turned to slaughter. Horse herds were shot, poisoned, driven off cliffs, used for target practice. When they come across a mustang, they shoot them and leave them for the brothers because they eat up all the good feet. When markets emerged for horse flesh, entrepreneurs brought trucks and planes into their roundups. As shown in the classic film, The Misfits, horses had no chance. Hundreds of thousands of horses were taken from the range and, uh, you know, rendered into dog food and chicken feed and their hides were taken. And, and ranchers began to refer to horses as pests. So, you know, they call coyotes pests. They would, like, staple their nostrils, sew their nostrils, and then they would run them wherever the highways and trucks would be, so that way they could get them on the trucks. And, you know, and, and by the way, it was like any commercial exploitation. It was, you know, it was, it was bloody and gory. And Horseman John Phillips the saw the carnage with his own eyes, and he saw the dramatic change in public opinion. The person most responsible for harnessing public outrage was an unassuming Nevadan, Velma Johnston, better known to the world as Wild Horse Annie. She got the public so riled up that Congress passed the 1971 Wild Horse and Burrow Act without a single dissenting vote. The letter of that law wasn't at all vague. It states, wild horses and burrows are living symbols of the spirit of the West. They enrich the lives of the American people and they're fast disappearing. It's the policy of Congress that wild horses and burrows shall be protected from capture, branding, harassment, and death. They are considered in the area where presently found as an integral part of the natural system of the public lands. Horses have survived in the wild for millions of years, adapting and overcoming many dangers, but there's one they could not have foreseen and may not survive, 
the specter of government protection. You know, I really believe that deep down they think of them as a, as a range maggot. You know, uh, they're a pest, they're a feral animal, they don't belong. When John Phillips accuses the BLM of being hostile to wild horses, he speaks from experience. Phillips was one of the very first wild horse specialists hired by BLM after the 1971 act went into effect. Back then, BLM wranglers spent their time in the saddle, not in the office. But from the very beginning, Phillips alleges, top management fudged the facts, inflating the numbers of horses, exaggerating their impact on the land, and always putting horses second or third to perceived rivals, especially cattle. In 1971, when the act became law, there were more than 50,000 wild horses on more than 50 million acres of designated herd areas. It was a small percentage of the lands under BLM control. Over the past few years, more than 22 million of the acres assigned to horses have been wiped off the ledger by the BLM, swept free of horses. And the number of horses in the wild cut almost in half. It looks like a dismantling of the 1971 protections. We used to have a lot of horses on the range, two million. And so, to me, this 30,000 head, is, that's so small it's not even funny. Still to come, a white knight rides to the rescue, and we put a face to the BLM horse program. What's your question? Would it work here in Nevada? Are you saying, why didn't we hold the event yeah, in Nevada? Yeah, I've asked that a Nevada? couple of times. Yeah, why didn't you hold it in Nevada? I'll tell you why. 